are still here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats, and today we're going to go over what it is that we are feeding our goats. Good morning, Lodi. I want to show everybody what you're eating here on the milk stand. Yeah? How you doing, girl? All right, so this is what we give them on their milk stand. It is a mixture of three different types of feed. We actually just mix them in these big barrels so that we have it all ready for us. And this here is what I call the good good. This is what they love to eat. It's what gets them really excited to get up on the milk stand and that's important if you want them up there. Okay, so again, I was saying it is a mixture. Um, and so the first thing that goes in is gonna be three parts Neutrina goat feed, 17% textured. Um, now this has minerals, it has um, kind of like a molasses coating on all of it and it just has grains in it. So it's really, really good for them. It's high in protein, which helps them produce milk. Um, and keeps them happy. They, they think it's like candy to them. So it's really, really awesome. And then here we're gonna do three parts of black oil sunflower seeds. Now this is really, really good for them. It's fiber um, and it also helps keep their, their coat really shiny, really pretty, um, which of course I love. I don't know, I, I, I know a lot of you guys notice that like the goats just kind of glisten in the sun. They have just such a really, really beautiful coat. Um, and that says a lot it says that they're really healthy so um, and I think this right here has a lot to do with it as well I really love giving them black oil sunflower seeds and it also ups their milk and lastly we do one part of mountain sunrise alfalfa goat pellets um, so these are really really awesome too we used to feed the horse pellets um, and they'll eat them um, it's harder on their teeth and they're just they're just a lot bigger they're alfalfa pellets but they're a lot bigger so these ones are specifically for goats and they're small um, let me just show you and they're a lot easier to um, chew up for the goats it doesn't that cat is crazy you guys Boo. <laughs> it doesn't affect their teeth or hurt them or grind them down or anything which is they, they can say they do say that that is the case with uh, horse pellets. Again, just because they're so big. What's up, boo? Speaking of big. Speaking of big. <laughs> what are you doing? Alright, so again, it is three parts Neutrina uh, goat feed, 17% textured, uh, three parts black oil sunflower seeds, and one part mountain sunrise goat alfalfa pellets. So if you guys are local, um, we get all of our feed at Benson Feed Supply, and this is, uh, they carry, they are actually a carrier of the Mountain Sunrise pellets, and since we use these, I mean, I really, really, really love the goat pellets, um, so I'm glad that we have that option. Now, it just depends on, obviously, where you are located and what your feed store has to offer, um, you know, so hopefully you have these things available to you, because, again, they, they have really, really change the way we feed our goats and um, they're just a lot healthier looking and I love it. So not to mention they really love it. Satisfying. What are you doing there? Um. <laughs> okay so obviously in addition to feeding them on the stand um, they're gonna get alfalfa pellets in in their pen as well. So we give them because they have the option to browse. They get this um, medium scoop and they're going to get two of these in their pens in their different little feeders and they're gonna get that daily and in the evening. And they're right, Cammy. Oh girl, you're all done. Is that your liquor? <laughs> Depending on the day, if it's raining, if I can let them out or if um, they're acting just a little extra hungry, I do offer them alfalfa hay. Um, so that's not something I give them all the time. Again, because they do browse. We're, we're fortunate enough that we're able to let our goats out to browse. Um, well, when it rains and, and grows browse for us here, which right now we are not suffering in that area. So because of the browse, um, they're able to forage, they get the stems, they get the roughage, and it helps break down all of that food. So the roughage is extremely important. Um, I would not recommend just feeding pellets just simply because they're going to need that fiber um, and they're going to need those stemmy and bark, things like that that they love. And again, it just helps break down all of that food for them. So we will offer the alfalfa hay if needed. 
Look at them. So this here is... <laughs> you guys see the mineral? Okay, so this here is some mineral that we have added into their diet as well. Now this is a free choice, um, and free choice just simply means you can put it and fill up a little bin in their, in their pen, and they'll just, in theory, eat it as they need it. Um, well, I find that they just won't stop eating it, so I don't like to do that. What we do, and it's, if you see it here, it just looks like a bunch of little tiny rocks, and they go nuts for it. They just love it. Um, and so I feed it to them right here in their little trough. Just put, well, Bessie, you gotta let me put it. I just do a little handful and I put it in a little pile and then they're like, yum, 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 yum. Come on, Betsy. You want some? Here we go. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> Here you go. You ready? So now you feed, you ate all of your feed. And I typically do this, I just wanted to show you guys so I hadn't put it first, but when we feed it, we do, we'll put the, the pellets in and then it'll just go right on top of, of the food here. Abilene, there you go. Wildy. You love it. And then this way, I way prefer this than giving um, free choice, uh, just simply because you get to see how much they get. Now, when I'm giving them their little handful, they're like, how do you know that's just a handful? Well, because it says each goat should have about that much every day. So so once a day, that, that is what they're supposed to be getting. Um, and it comes with a little scoop, which the scoop kind of just, one of the little scoops fits right in my hand. So whatever, that's what I do. There you go. Lita, you're so cute. All right, Cammy, your turn. There you go. Every time I get the bag out, of course, they just kind of go crazy. Now, Leia and Mia, so that's something I've noticed too, like with, with the younger ones and, and Honey and Pepper as well, they're kind of just like, mm, just now starting to get the hang of it. And, and we've been feeding it to them for quite a while. Um, Honey and Pepper really don't like it though. So, here you go. So I'm trying to encourage them to eat um, eat it, but you know, some goats just don't like it. And so again, they would say, oh, well that's because they don't need it. Well, not necessarily, because you know, you can see on their coats or, you know, you wanna obviously watch their coat. That's gonna be your first sign that they are deficient in something. Um, if it's copper deficiency, then they'll, they'll just kind of get brown on their back legs or they can get fish tail which is just where they're losing hair on the tip of their tail darren turn your alarm off sorry <laughs> um, so they'll lose hair on the tip of their tail so it just kind of looks like the hairs are going out like that um and fish tail girl uh-uh you had your ship you have to wait you'll get more tomorrow but they love this stuff and again so this year the doe herd um i did not i didn't copper them because they don't have any copper deficiency because I've been feeding this or because we've added this in their diet. So I, I'm pleased with it. I, I love, love, love this mineral. See, like no joke, you guys. They see the orange bag and they're like, give me more. You got your liquor out, girl. You don't need more. You don't need no more. No. They're crazy. Funny girls. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Lily. wanted to show you guys if you see how this black goat here now this is honey maddie i'm really not trying to show you honey it's okay Max. um she's getting just kind of a little bit 
reddish hair here. So I hope you guys can see that because I know we're under the tent and all. And just a little back here too. So I did, that again is a sign of copper deficiency. And so I did get honey and pepper because they just don't like to eat the mineral. I'm always gauging and just watching their coat and just making sure that they look healthy. Um, and if I see any of those signs, then then that's when I'm gonna copper them or, or do something, you know, give them extra mineral that they need. So let's get on the other end here and I'll show you how much honey and pepper really don't like their mineral. And because I said that, you watch. They're gonna eat it down. Do you want some, Maddie? All of a sudden you're looking like you like me. Uh-huh. All right, so here's, here's honey. We're gonna give her her little scoop. And she's gonna get mad and eat all around it and say, yuck. Why did you put that in my dish? Honey. Yeah, she keeps, she tries, she, she just sniffed it again, but she will not eat it. Um, so if they're not gonna eat this extra mineral, then again, that, that's why I did copper her and I could see it just starting in, in her back legs. It was getting a little brown. You love it, huh, girl? Look at you, now you'll be nice. If I give her mineral, she likes me, but that's it. Mm. Mia, Mia is, starting to get the hang of it. Here you go. She's like, I know I like it, but I don't like it. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> All right, you don't have a problem with it, do you, Cassie? Yum, yum, yum. All right, here, girl. Here it is. Oh, May. Here you go, girl. Right there. It's like a treat for them. And keeps them healthy and shiny. All right. Thank you, Ruger Tippy. You want yours? And pepper. Pepper. She's a little better than honey, but not much. Oh, look at you. She's learning. Oh, she's actually eating it way better than she usually does. So that's good. Good job. All right, here you go, Ray. There you go. Now we're going to just get these girls milked out and then we're going to let them out to browse. The last thing that the goats obviously eat around here, um, you know, again, when we're fortunate enough and get enough rain for the grass to grow, is our native grasses. So they get to browse um, for the whole day, as long as it's not raining or anything like that. Um, and there's several different native grasses that we have on our land, um, as well as little, little tiny bushes, like fairy dusters. Um, we have cactuses that they absolutely love to eat for some reason, I don't know why, but and, they do. And destroy and destroy. <laughs> um, and of course we've got mesquite and then they love the mesquite bark and they love the mesquite leaves. Um, and then when they grow the beans, they really, really love the mesquite beans. So they get to browse on all of these different things that we have here. Um, and they get to go just pick and choose what their favorites are. Now, depending on how the grass is, um, like if it's super, super green and lush, they'll just eat the seed heads off of the top if there is any. Um, and if there's not, they're just kind of more looking for fairy dusters or they're looking for the Mormon tea bush, you know, things like that. So if the grass is super green, um, they typically just leave it alone. They don't really like the green grass, but once it's kind of, um, no, not my hair. Once it's the color of my hair, it's their favorite. And <laughs> so if you guys can see that, it's not, it's starting to get yellow and you can probably see it better, um, you know, or or golden but um, you know it's it's not as green and and lush so it's the perfect bite right now where it's just a little bit of green um, and and you know it is starting to turn yellow that is when it is their favorite favorite so this here 
Looks like a Mormon tea bush that you have eaten all the green off of, except that one little spot that Wildy's trying to eat. And then <laughs> here, I guess. But then that just continues to grow back. Once we move them and browse them on another area, um, this bush will grow back and then they get to eat it back down again, huh? You did right, Daisy? Wildy, you're finding a couple little green spots. And then there's this here. Yeah, let's see if you guys can see it is a little bit of a fairy duster so they've eaten all the leaves off it but they really really favor these fairy dusters um, and they get these really cool little pink flowers on them and when they're flowering that's when it's absolutely their favorite so they're not really eating on them too much right now and then we just have a bunch of bunch grasses so they do not like bermuda or like anything we have in the backyard that type of grass they won't eat it they might like to lay down in it but they absolutely will not eat it um, so they like this more stemmy kind of a kind of a grass and you're right how are you abilene and over here of course we have cammy trying to be a loner but leia's not having it and then this is just a mesquite so they love to eat all the little leaves and if it's a big enough tree that has some bark on it they love to eat the bark off their stomachs are quite amazing at what they can actually break down for them here is a yucca now these yuccas they really really like to eat on um, and they love to the taller ones actually they love to scratch on but they more like this uh this isn't a taller one so they really haven't attacked it too much but once it dies this bottom stuff here that's what they really like to eat are you gonna show them lodi yummy yummy you're following me today huh sweet girl love the yuccas it's a scratching post and it's nutritious Oh, yeah. All right, this is the cactus that they tend to favor. Um, actually, it's the only one that they, that they eat that we have on the property. So this one here is the prickly pear, and it's just a little guy, but they either haven't seen it or they're not in the mood for it right now. And they do decide to change what they favor browsing on, just depending on the season. And here's a little cactus. Um, these are actually called hedgehogs, and they don't like them. Here's another Mormon tea bush that they have gone to town on. And this here is too high for them to reach. So that's why there's some green left on it still. But they're very, very hardy plants here. They actually just continue to grow back. So again, once we take them off of this plot um, and move them to somewhere else, this has an opportunity to grow back because it'll be at least a year before they're back on this land. This mean, 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 mean cactus right here is called the jumping choya. It's called the jumping choya because it jumps at you. If you barely even touch it, it sticks to you like glue, like a very, very painful, sharp stabbing glue. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah, show them, Dan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> give, that, give that choya a big old hug. High five, buddy. <laughs> that pretty much covers what these goats of mine are eating. Um, and whatever we feed and, and it's it's been really really helping their coats um you know they're healthy they're good they're awesome and they're happy they're so, shiny yeah they're very shiny goats <laughs> um, but yeah so anyway that that's just what what we feed and of course again you guys you're gonna have to check your local feed store um, or tractor supply things like that because there's there's a good chance that you have some of the same things um, available if not the same then then somewhat the same and uh, you know, I know a lady in Florida that she can only get peanut hay. So, and we don't have peanut hay here. Um, so if you don't have uh, access to alfalfa, you know, there are other hays that, you know, are high in protein that you could, you could feed your goats. So again, you're gonna have to check your local feed store and ask them what they feel is best um, to, feed, to feed goats. So our feed store is pretty awesome and supplies some really, really top-notch food for us. Um, again, Benson Feed Store and we love it so we're we're lucky we're fortunate and we also have plenty of access to alfalfa which uh pound for pound is definitely the best hay that you can give your does um give your goats rather 
it's just really really high in protein so um, to that I will also add it does depend on the season what's going on with the goats are they producing milk how much you want to feed um, you know if they're producing milk you you want high protein so that they build that milk or that they make that milk and keep weight on their body um, you know if they're if they're kidding if they're just just depending on what's going on so all of this yummy nutritious food that these goats get um, they turn it in to some lovely lovely milk that we get to make soap with I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to start making some soap out of the dough's lovely, lovely milk. So as I told you guys, we are doing our winter soaps right now so that they will be ready um, in about six weeks or so. And I showed you guys that I had started making the candy cane bar. Now this is such an amazing bar, you guys. So not only does it have uh, two different types of kale and clay, so it's got the purple kale and clay and white kale and clay to pull out any impurities um, and just help your skin, obviously. And then um, it has a lot of peppermint in this bar. So peppermint is one of those essential oils that just makes you more alert. Um, and it's a great one to use in the morning. It just helps wake you up. And again, just kind of just gives you this sense of alertness. So it's a great bar. So it's got that deep red color. Um, and then the kale and clay just helps it be a little bit wider than than just say normal goat milk soap. So that's why I add the kale and clay in it too. Um, but again, oh, love this, love this bar. So we are going to start making it. We're gonna start with our peppermint essential oil. We'll put that down here in our oils. Now I don't mention it every single time, but I have had some people asking. So the oils that I use, I only use four different oils. I've tried lots of lots of different variations with other oils and stuff and this here of course i uh, won't give you the exact recipe but the oils um, are just uh, olive oil castor oil shea butter and coconut oil and i just found that after a couple years of trial and error this recipe that i finally came up with was like that's the one i love it and then the best part the doe's milk Thank you, ladies. And then we are also going to add in uh, purple kale and clay for half of the soap. And then the other half is gonna get the white kale and clay. That purple is gonna turn this deep red color um, once it hits the lye. I just put the powder without adding the oil. I just wanted you guys to see what the color is. Is that just, it's such a beautiful purple. And of all the kale and clays that I use, um, I've, I've used a lot. This is the only one that doesn't hold true to its color after the, you know, after you make the soap. So it is kind of a bummer, but I do love the deep red color that it gives me. All right, we're just gonna mix this up, get that blended. Because of the method um, that I have to use with this particular soap, I'm not making a double batch and it's kind of, I don't like it. It's like a little bit of soap in here, but um, either way, I wouldn't be able to pour it into the molds and give you guys the good view um, with the camera. So that's why we're just doing a single for this because I did still want to show you guys. Now for the lye. Okay, we're going to blend this up, but just until it's barely, barely blended because we still have to blend in the clays and we need this pretty runny for it to work out. Okay, that is blended. So we just want half and half. Fill up our little jars here. Man, this is weird not working with very much soap here. Let's see, I'm gonna try to get it as even as possible. Now I'm just gonna blend the white first. Try to burp that, get the bubble out of there. And then we'll blend the purple. Okay, I know 
it doesn't look like much when you add the white kaolin, but in the outcome, once the soap is cured and done, it does make a difference. <laughs> All right, I don't want to blend it anymore. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, so I got my block here, right? It's just pretty much a tilter for my um, mold here. And then we are gonna alternate pouring in the different colors. So I'm gonna start with the white. And just along the side here, just kind of a little back and forth. Now the other one, just doing it right along the edge, trying not to spill it outside of the mold, which I'm really good at. Cool. And then we just do this back and forth, and then once it fills a little more, we're going to drop it. Pull this out just a bit and drop her so I can continue to pour. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so lucky. This soap is not doing me dirty and thickening up too quickly. How cool is this, you guys? I like making this bar, it's fun. And different. Okay, almost. I hear Emily in there yelling at her dog for biting her cat that won't quit clawing her. I would probably Bite the cat that clawed me too, but okay. Let's see. Okay, that's almost full. Let's see if I can get one more white line in here. Come on. Not too much. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of shake it a little. All right, so that is how you pour it in there. Um, and then again, just to give it that swirly, here, I'll show you again. See that? See that? See that? That's how it looks, so cool, huh? All right, let me just clean up my sloppiness. And then we'll show you how we top this bad boy. For this topping, we're just gonna take the skewer um, and kind of go zigzag this way and then this way, and it just gives this really pretty um, swirly kind of a kind of a look. Okay, so we're just gonna go like this all the way down. And it already looks beautiful. Something about that swirl, man. Okay, now we're just gonna go zoop. And that is the topping. I just think that is so gorgeous. I can tell this is still pretty runny. I got lucky, lucky, lucky with this time. So check her out. Ah, oh, it's just lovely, and it smells lovely as well. Okay, guys, so obviously our Christmas soaps aren't going to be out for a while. Our fall soaps are almost out. Um, 
here within the next week or so. Uh, but until then, you can always head on over to the Etsy shop. We have a ton to choose from. There's literally something for everybody, um, no matter what scent you like. Um, you know, the benefits you're looking for for your skin, it all just kind of describes everything in each description of each soap. So head on over to the shop. There is a link for our Etsy shop in the description below and get yourself some soap. Your skin will thank you. And other than that, you guys, I got a lot more work to do and a lot more soap to make for the day. So I'm going to head out here and I will see you guys again soon. Thank you.